Good evening, FlossTube. It is Elisa on August 11th at um, 10.49 in the evening. Um, that's why there's a little bit of glare. I apologize for that. I will try to keep my head down as much as possible to um, relieve the glare in front of my eyes. Um, I wasn't planning on doing this video. I haven't done any stitching. So the moon is exactly the same as she was last time. Um, I haven't done any stitching. I've been really busy with um, a lot of running around and doing necessary evil administration stuff. I'm sorry if you hear whimpering in the background. My dog is needy. Um, no, go lay down, please. Go lay down. You might be able to actually see him this time. Come here, Poopy. Puppy. Dante. Dante. Come here. Here you are. Here you go. Here you are. He's a little insecure. He's about two and a half years old. And he's a little bit insecure, so. But he's mostly friendly. Yes. He just wants me to know that he's here. And he doesn't like it when I talk to the weird box. Yes. Yes. He'll be okay now. Okay. Sorry, I've been wanting to show him for so long, and I just managed to get my area clean enough. I'll definitely go back and check um, and see exactly. <sighs> okay, so um, here's my disclaimer for this whole video tonight. Um, it's going to be ranty. There may be, I'll try to keep it mostly PG, but it might get a little PG-13 with some of the words. Um, I will try to explain myself as much as possible, but um, yes, we're all going to have words. And um, so he, he doesn't, he doesn't like me upset. <laughs> he gets, he gets kind of worried when mommy gets upset. So um, I also might be using this. Because um, I was a smoker for 17 years. <sighs> wow. Um, and it's been a year since I quit cigarettes. I still use this on a daily basis. I've just recently gone down to zero nicotine. So I'm actually officially off the nicotine as of two weeks ago. Yay! Um, that's really great. It's yummy. It's uh, The flavor I am using tonight is a lemon curd cheesecake. Absolutely yummy. So if you see, if it gets obscure, cause it, I will show you what it does. It's not a lot. I don't create a lot of vapor like a lot of people do on top of that. Anyway, so um, I might be using this tonight. I might do... Um, say some things, but it, it's going to be about the negativity that's going around lately. Um, and things that have seemed to be, I've, I haven't experienced them personally, thankfully. I'm very new to both the Facebook groups and FlossTube. I was mainly um, on Reddit, as I've said in the past. Um, oh, for all those um, Harry Potter nerds out there, Neville would have done it in four books. I want to turn this some way into a cross stitch at one point. But anyway, I digress. Um, my dog is being so darn needy right now. You should know. Go lay down. Okay, I'm going to try to ignore him. That usually makes him settle down. He's been fed. He's been walked. He's done his business. He just likes to complain sometimes very loudly. So I'm sorry if you hear him in the background. Um, yes. So, what has prompted this? Um, a fellow floss tuber has taken down her channel. Or she has as of earlier this evening. I don't know if she's going to put it back up. People are trying to convince her to put it back up. Not convince her, but people are trying to support her if she wanted to put it back up. But there's no you know, coercion there. It's whatever she's comfortable with. And I totally get it. I totally get walking away from what's causing you grief because it's just not worth it anymore. It sucked 
all of the fun out of anything you were doing with it. And why bother? Why do that? Um, something very little known about me. I had a video blog on YouTube when YouTube was very young, about um, nine years ago. I was a very new um, single mom. I had just moved to Toronto. I um, My daughter was not yet three, so very little girl. And um, I basically started the shaking. The only thing that's keeping him quiet right now is me rubbing his chin. He's got me trained. He's a, he's a Doberman, and Dobermen are extremely smart dogs, and if you let them, they will train you. So he has me and my boyfriend and our daughter pretty well trained. Um, but he's a sweet dog. Um, where was I? Uh, yeah, so I did this video blog. I had maybe a dozen videos over four or five months, um, and I, you know, it was mainly a personal video, like a personal blog, blog um, just a verbal diary. Um, I don't even remember how many subscribers I had. It wasn't many. It was maybe a couple hundred. Um, I also like to do um, cutting up videos and putting them to music. Um, I have a couple that I did that um, were actually removed from YouTube because uh, they were done to various movies that were um, licensed. Like one was <laughs> to Xena. It was um, Mandy Moore's Stupid Cupid, and it was all cuts of Carl Urban as Cupid in Xena and Hercules. Um, cause damn, Carl Urban is Cupid. Um, I'm a huge Carl Urban fan. Um, oh, uh, so, um, have you seen this guy? Have you? Go Google him right now. Just Google, 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 Google images and put in Carl, K-A-R-L, Urban, U-R-B-A-N. I will wait. Just do it. Okay, you did it? See? I told you so. Um, yeah. Uh, so it was it was really cute little video, but um, that one didn't get pulled, I don't believe. But the um, one I did of this really cool song. Um, anyway, it was a really cool song. If I I might go into them later and, and repost them and post them public privately to people. Um, but. Uh, it was um, the movie Serenity with the clips I used from it, and specifically highlighting the um, relationship between Simon and River, the brother-sister pair, in that show. So, um, I had those videos up, I had some other videos, I was really having fun with some video editing on my really cool, you know, um, Microsoft. I had this brand new machine that was running XP, and XP was like top of the line at that point, and it was just, it was really cool. It had Movie Maker, which is why I use Movie Maker now to do these videos, because it makes it easier, but um, Movie Maker back then was so much cooler. It had so many more options. Um, they really dumbed it down. Anyway, I digress. There will be a lot of digressing. Um, that I deleted that account in a rage because of people who harassed me. So I know what this floss tuber is going through, and I rage with her. I'm, you know, you, you don't you don't poke the dragon because you taste good barbecued. Um, it's not, you know, I, I so many years growing up. I was told, as many people I'm sure will have contested this, um, that don't give the bullies what they want. Unfortunately, as much as I didn't want to give the bullies what I want, which, which in my case was really a reaction, my body betrayed me. So um, it was like um, I would cry in class. I would cry the drop of a hat. In six, seven, eight, ninth grade, um, there was a time I, you know, I would just start crying, and because my emotions, part of my mental dis um, disease, causes me to feel emotions a lot more acutely than other people, and a lot more physically, and 
I would there, I'd try to stand strong, and my eyes would well up with tears, I would feel sick, and I know a lot of people feel this way, and I know a lot of people can control it, and some people can't, and I was one of those people who could not, and they loved it, and they fed on it, and they used it to make my life miserable. So, um, after high school, I, um, traveled a lot to get away from a lot of the people in the town I grew up in. Um, I never really found a group of friends. I was mo mainly a lo uh, loser. <laughs> See, that was a Freudian slip. Um, I was mainly a loner who would um, clap on to a group of friends and then find that they would fall apart, the groups would fall apart, and I would be alone again, or I would my mental illness, my depression would kick in, and I would retreat and didn't want any human contact. It was too difficult for me. Um, so, but I've always wanted it. I've always wanted a group of friends and to feel included and, you know, belonging somewhere. And it's just recently I turned 33. I keep saying 30. No, I turned 34 this year. Um, I keep saying 33. Um, but I did, I turned 34 this year and, um, I'm trying, I'm finally learning what I need to know about myself to overcome those challenges that living with mental illness, um, brings up. Sorry, I am in a lot of pain um, tonight. I have not had access to my medicine in two days. Um, and I'm hopefully getting it tomorrow. Um, there's just been lots of doctor's appointments to arrange. Anyway, it's, it's how it is, has to be, and it's getting managed, but today was a bad day. Um, and I did a lot of walking today, so it's extra, extra bad. So I have... I'm, I'm kind of very carefully sat down here and propped up, but um, yeah, this is hopefully not going to be much longer. Um, I hopefully I can get my point across without going into too many details of how I was you know, tortured by people as a kid. And I mostly have forgiven those people, but not for them, for me, because if I forgive something, I can forget about it. And mostly I don't think about those people anymore because they're not worth the time anymore. So, um, I like to live by the solemn words of Will Wheaton, who is the king of all geeks. Um, if you don't know him, he played what Wesley Crusher on Star Trek The Next Generation, which I grew up on, fascinated, and basically began my love of sci-fi, um, which still is today. And... Um, his motto, his personal motto, since he's basically come back and has become this geek icon because he does many different things within the geek community and raising awareness about, you know, um, people within the geek community. Um, he, he, um, his, his main philosophy is don't be a dick. That's it. You know, don't be a dick. Don't be a dick to people. Don't be a dick to animals. Don't be a dick to, you know, society at large. And you'll have a pretty good life. And I totally agree with that. But you know what? It's hard. We're human. We're all human. We judge people. Every day, we judge people. And I'm guilty of it. I actually had a rather stark um, reminder of that today. We came out of my doctor's appointment, which is on one of the very busiest um, intersections in downtown Toronto. Well, north downtown Toronto, uh, Young and Eglinton for anyone who knows Toronto. Um, and on each corner, we just had to cross the street and then go into the sub subway. It was very close. But thankfully, I was in a lot of pain. Um, I'm stopping at the crosswalk because it's red, and I kind of look next to me because there's this l lady standing right next to me with a placard. So I kind of look down and see what it is. And I met with the um, graphic 
image of an aborted fetus. Um, sorry, I saw red. I had literally, the, the entire placard was various shades of dark and bright reds. And I looked at the girl who was holding it. And she was this fresh faced, probably barely 18 year old girl next door with this huge smile on her face. And I must have looked horrified. And I'm like, you should not be allowed to have that out here. How dare you do that? That's disgusting. And she's like, yeah, that's disgusting. You think that's disgusting? And I'm like, anyway, I had words. I had words with her. There was a little bit of exchange. It was barely 15 seconds. I did not come out of that exchange feeling well. My boyfriend was with me. He accompanies me to my doctor's appointment because I have developed a bit of a phobia of doctors because of my condition and leading up to the, the things that have caused my condition. Um, so I, um, we, I fumed and I vented and we, we got on the subway and I vented and I vented and I vented and I kind of let up and then we got on the bus and I vented some more and I got home and then we talked about it and he, he's always been of the mind of, yeah, I might not like what they're doing, but I support the right they do. There's a Voltaire quote out there that I can't remember what it is. It's like, um, something about, um, yeah, I might not like it, but I support the right for free speech. It was basically the gist of it. I wish I could find that exact quote. I saw it just today on Facebook, which is so strange. And it's true. I, I support everyone's right to free speech. And I should. And I think everyone should. Um, because this is my soapbox. This is my free speech right here. You might not agree with anything I'm saying, and that's absolutely fine. Um, but I have the power to say it and put it out there. And maybe start a discussion. Maybe I'm going to have now nasty comments on mine. Um, just for the record, um, any nasty comments are deleted without second thought. I don't even look at them. Um, I, I'm a very fast reader. Like I said, I, I, I started reading when I was very, very young. I read very quickly. I can scan a comment, and if it even smells bad, it's deleted. I don't even care. Um, if I accidentally delete your, your comment... <laughs> Um, and I shouldn't have, please let me know. And if it's legitimate, I have no problem taking that back and saying my bad, mea culpa. But, um, I don't have time for internet trolls to me. I do not feed the trolls. So, um, I, anyway, um, <sighs> I'm trying to remember what I was talking about. I went off on the disclaimer, and now I can't remember. Hold on, let me go back. Okay. So it was free speech and the chick with the pro-life placard. Um, see, there should be a limit to what people can show in their kind of demonstrations. Especially because I've, I've been reading a lot of this on the Toronto subreddit that they're doing this a lot this summer. Apparently they were down at Young and Dundas as well today, which is the other huge hub of the city. And there are young children who go through there. If, if I went through there with, and I have gone through Young and Eglinton with my daughter when she was young, like three, four, five years old. If she would have seen that, she would have had nightmares for months. Why would you want to do that to a child? Why? What's the need? You need to get your point across that that's what you want to do. I don't agree with it. I don't agree with those tactics. But by acting up, I was I knew I was giving her what she wanted and her chance to voice her opinion. And 
I, I now I've come to the conclusion that it's it's probably better to not give them the chance. If you don't agree with their, if you don't agree with their, what they're saying, walk the other way. But uh, although at this point it was hard because they were at all four corners. If I wanted to avoid them at all, it was, uh, um, you know, don't give them the your your time because that's what they're out there doing. They're trying to people lure people into a discussion with them to try to convince them that their way is correct. So if you already disagree with them, there's no reason you need to stop and say anything. I might loudly say to my partner, "Wow." It's, you know, I might say something to him about it, but I don't think I will. I, I, but in the heat of the moment, that's the thing, though, because you can say anything. I'm a pretty rational person. I can say anything. You know, it's been, let's say, 10 hours since this happened. Um, I can say anything I want right now and feel completely cool-headed about it. In the moment, I saw red. I was not cool-headed. My heart was beating. I was tense. I was, I mean, I think that's, I think the reaction to that is what maybe has caused me as much pain as I'm having tonight. Um, so it's, <sighs> sorry, so like, I'm Dr. Pepper. It's water. I love Dr. Pepper. I wish I could drink it. You guys kill me. Um, so, uh, yeah. Anyway. This person, I'm hoping this Foss tuber comes back in some capacity, even if it's just to do her own private videos for herself that she can go back or even share with some close people in closed groups who will not share them, I think that would be fantastic. And if I have to close off my channel, I will be very upset. Well, no. I probably wouldn't close my channel because I value my own free speech. And I have toughened up considerably, not completely, I'm still vulnerable in some areas and I'm still working on it. It's a mental illness is very, very difficult to treat because things don't work for everyone as they do for everyone. So there's no pill to take. There's no one thing to do. There is shiftings of internal paradigms that have to happen. And it's anyway, um, I hope I never see this kind of ugliness in my comments at all. Um, I hope that you all can take a look at yourselves and be a little kinder to the people around us. You can look at someone and be like, oh my god, what are they wearing? I can't believe they left the house like that. But as long as that thought never leaves your head, you don't ever have to say hello to that person or interact with that person. Just it, it's gone. It's what ha it's 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 out of your head. I do not feel the need to share other people's because really what I've learned what bullies do and why bullies do it through many years of psychotherapy and many therapists have told me this. Um, and my own research and my own firsthand knowledge is most of the time it's about control. It's about the ability to cause pain in someone else. Um, because that means that you're more than just your little self. You've affected someone else in a big way. Look how much you've affected the other person. That must mean I'm really important too. And I think that's really what it is with bullies. I think it is their own self-esteem, their own insecurities that they try to fight off by picking on those insecurities in other people. And for that, I think they should be pitied because 
as someone who has suffered from low self-esteem. It's not fun. Very hard. So, I really hope this floss tour comes back and brings her videos back because I really enjoyed them. And I hope everyone else has a really nice evening. And you all mean a lot to me. Because you're kind and you're warm and you're nice and you guys are accepting. And I want everyone to have that experience. So I'm going to say goodnight. And I will see you guys soon.